Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Golden Heart Show. Golden Heart Show is an informative program that focuses on the impact of humanitarian services and assistance to our society. On Golden Heart Show, we we'll meet, we we'll talk, and we we'll share it. I am Chizoba Chukukora, your host. As you may have known by now, on Golden Heart Show, we showcase individuals, organizations, institutions that are into humanitarian services. Yes, we tend to learn from their challenges, with the tell us, they tell us their success stories, and we also get to know what motivates them. So today on this program, we have in our midst our guest, the Executive Director of Youth Advocate for Sustainable Development, located in Abuja, Nigeria. Uh, let's get to meet him. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Ayo Adegbola. Executive Director, Youth Advocate for Sustainable Development in Rural Communities. We are located in Abuja. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, can we get to know what your organization is all about? Youth Advocate is called in the short form YASD Youth. We are basically want to see sustainable development in rural communities. Okay. That is our focus, at least just one. Mm. We have the SDG and all that, and all that are so broad. But if if in the SDG somebody can just provide one development in rural communities yes. anywhere out of the world in Nigeria, we we'll appreciate that's what we are looking out to. So mm. as for us in YSD youth, we don't have a project that is donor funded, but we all do our style is to prepare our projects so donor can see our project and work with what we have. Yeah. We don't want to be a okay, for me to application with this is what we are doing. If you so like it, join us. We are not fun, we are not do not driven. Okay. That is what we do. So that is why I came yes, up okay. I came up with the organization to try and make things right. Wow, that's a great one there. Well, um apart from you, uh, who are the brains, other brains behind the organization? The, the bigger brain and the push that made me to even want to go to to get this because it started as youth for youth network mm -hmm. me and my friend but as time goes on things were not moving well because i left what i was doing i don't have anything to do but he is doing something and it's very busy so there is no time so the brain the bigger brain that motivated could let's do it it's my daughter mm -hmm. see daddy let's do it because she saw a challenge in the community where we stay about girls' education. She now came back home and said, look at what girls are facing. I think that Youth for Youth Network, let's revive it. If it's possible, let's change the name. Let's do it together. So she is my co-founder. Wow. That's my daughter and her name is Peace Ayo. Wow, that's great. Peace, how old is she? Peace, should, Peace will be 17 by June 7th. Wow, that is great. Wow, 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 that is a great thing. Well, can you tell us the major aim for establishing this organization? Like I, like I said before, okay. to see a sustainable development yeah. in rural community, just at least one, that you can say, yes, this one is sustainable. Wow. And I've visited at least over 60 to 70 communities outside Abuja. Yeah. So, and I've seen so many great projects but they are not sustainable mm. because the community don't need them or well, because the NGOs want the project they just bring it to the community so what I see, what I want to see is at least one mm. if I can establish a sustainable development in this community yeah. today I am satisfied that is the dream. that is what we want to do your aim yes. okay, that's great well, um, you've heard what he has to say the aim of um, Starting this organization is not an easy thing. But well, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. So you get to hear the challenges because there are definitely challenges that he went through. So hold on, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Golden Heart Show. And we've been talking with the Executive Director of Youth Advocate for Sustainable Development, 
the person of Mr. Ayo, Adebola, Adebola, sorry, <laughs> sorry for that. Okay, and uh, right now he's going to be telling us about the challenges that he has encountered, or oh, he's still encountering, um, you know, passing through in this in this organization of yours and we want to know what are the major challenges that you face or you have faced or you're facing in this organization you know well, as a starter the most challenge we are facing or i am facing currently is fund okay how do i mean fund I have the project, I have series of projects, but the ability of you believing in me, wanting to invest in what I am bringing up, yeah. is a challenge. People want an existing organization. People want an established organization. How do you want the other one that starting you to go? We have series of good projects, like one project you are running now, that they're going to send our children out of school very soon. We we'll try to make sure that girls go to school, but the fund is not coming as we expect because somebody is paying for their school fees. Will tell you what he or she wants to see in the school. Now, for you to continue, you have passion. You are staying with this child in the community, but the person that is spending the money is not staying with the child in the community, and yes. he or she don't know what the child is facing, and the child parent. Doesn't know what you two are also facing to let to ensure that the child's school fees yes. is being built. Do you understand me? Yes. The major is fund and trust. Mm. Others are existing like five years, ten years experience. Yes. I know that is one issue that we're having in the country. Trust. Yes. We have issue in this country. Trust. Mm -hmm. But I think people work should speak for them. If I give you an application. That's why you ask me to pay my referees. Mm -hmm. You should be able to call my referees and get to know who is Ooh, this person. This person yes. Maybe that might make you trust me more. Yes. But in this country, we have issues with trust. And because of one person has misbehaved, you now categorize everybody that to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. We have not been registered. We are working on it. Even the body started is even annoying. But let me not say that. <laughs> Since last year, we've paid for registration. We've done everything just for us to get the certificate. That's become an issue. Wow. Just because you don't have a CA certificate, mm. agency in the country will not help you. Yes. They expect the fact you have a good project. You say you're not satisfied. You're not registered with the country. Mm. But I have a good project, and what I'm doing is in the country. <laughs> But I'm trying to do a genuine thing. What people will say, eh, you are not registered, you are not up to the level, you are not that, and all this, and all that. And I'm, at times I will get angry. People that are giving awards, people that are calling, that are giving awards, they don't even do thing of what we are doing in the communities. But you give them all, but you don't recognize us. Then how will you recognize us when you're not giving us opportunities? How would you know what you are doing when you're not giving us opportunities? Because we don't have fund. Because everything that we need is fund. You also have this fund. We have applied genuinely. Look at what we are doing. Come to see what we are doing. If it's not what you want, fine. But I definitely know how you come to what I'm doing. You don't like what I've been doing. Yeah. Check out on Facebook. I've done an amazing project with no, with little or no fund. That is what we have. The challenge is fund and trust. The challenge that we have fund. Trust <laughs> and certificate issues wow. registration. Wow. How long do you think the certificates will be ready? The CSE certificate. Yeah, for the certificate, I believe God on the twenty seventh of May, which that is the day we did our first program as youth advocate, to will become three years on twenty seventh of May this year, oh. and I am. Believing God that on the seventh of May mm -hmm. I will showcase the certificate at that event. Mm -hmm. That's great. Because the barrister has promised me that he will come on up before that day. But I want it to be before that day. I want to be before that day. Because certificate is one thing I believe that if I had a certificate, we'll do more than what we have done. Yes. Because people will believe us more. 
all that had to go into it. Yes, yes, that is true. Because when people ask you, well, what, are you registered, like you said earlier on before, definitely they want to know that you are recognized in the country, no, no matter how little the recognition is. So moving on, um, these challenges, how has it shaped you? The challenges are my driving force. The challenges is my motto. The challenges is my car. It can hurt my volunteer. I never let any challenges weigh me down. I don't ask people that even know me. I'm a Jackie. <laughs> I walk very well. So when I when I come to you, said no, I'll still come to you again until you say yes. But when you say no, I will try to do something. When you say no on this project today, on this event today, tomorrow you will say yes in the next one because you have seen the first one. So that's the challenge is, hey, I don't know, I don't go, I don't, hey, why? You, mm -mm. you will not, I will not get tired. Yeah. That is what is pushing me. I even like the challenge. Let them come on. <laughs> that is pushing me. Wow. Okay. With the economy situation of the country, uh, um, how do you manage to achieve this great project, putting your own welfare into consideration? <laughs> Let me tell you. Currently, I don't have a job. This is my job. Mm -hmm. And it's my life. So how do I get to feed my family? Because I have two kids and a wife. If an NGO comes to our community because of what I have done, people will say there is this man that is doing something in this community. Work with him. So whatever the NGO pays me, that's what I use to feed my family. So when the NGO needs volunteers, because I already have a pool of volunteers, I bring them on board. Yeah. They do the job. They are being paid their money. That is where I get to pay my volunteers. So when there is no job, they know there is no job when job comes they get and when there is no job for us to do we'll be happy and we believe in god but so far so good god has been faithful mm. god has been faithful yes okay when you say you pay volunteers is it like payments or just thank you <laughs> thank you job has, has been done all this one there's no more thank you job anymore in this world there's nothing motivating that volunteers he or she will not want to volunteer it was when we were doing volunteers, I didn't know that they were volunteers. But now, these young ones don't want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. But at least they have, they have an expectation that yes. yes, maybe someday, sometime, mm -hmm. they'll be. Anytime I'm going for meetings, like for events, they call up for events, they do this. I invite them, let's go together, let's see. When they get there, they give them a stipend of transport and all that. And they get to get, in, they get, to get the knowledge. They will be happy. Yeah. They want to do more. Yeah. When we got have a project, they, at the point we had a project with one organization where we have five, six of them working, including me, and they have been paid some. I don't mention the amount, but the money was good for them. The money was even okay, even though they had the job, so I don't even get that amount of money. The money was going with them. They are going with the money at home. Oh, but at the point when the project stops, it won't only two or three. Everybody understand, and it not stop working. Because there is no thank you job anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, how do you source for funds to achieve your goals? What I do is individual donation. I've not had any project being funded by any donor. I just thank God for the people I have as friends. Because mm -hmm. people that believe in me, if your friend will not believe in you, nobody will believe in you. When I have anything to do, I call my friends, I have an organization, mm -hmm. and I call my friends, I individually like businessmen, mm -hmm. I have this job, I have this place I want to do, can you support us? Like, like they will call on you. Yeah. Somebody, gave you somebody gave me your contact yeah. to reach you. That is how we do it. I call individual, I have place we want your support to ensure that this thing happens. Yeah. If it's what you are doing, if it's what you want to see, you support us to whatever thing that you have. Even like I'm here now, I will still collect school fees for some children from it. Love you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no problem. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Um, to your volunteers, you say you've been talking about having volunteers, people that you know come around you, work with you in your project. What are the criteria for having your volunteers? Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, my number one is zeal. 
passion. Okay. Passion. One good thing about my volunteer is that I didn't recruit them. Okay. I didn't ask for their account. I didn't ask them to come be volunteer. This organization was running between me, my daughter, and my wife. Okay. My wife is a finance treasurer, account, and uh, refreshment attendance. Me and the organize the executive director, and I walk around look for the money. I'm also the programs. When my daughter is the programs, and so when they see what we are doing in the communities, all my volunteers are from the same community. When they see what we are doing in the community, then they say, Walk up to us. I want to be part of this. Like she will testify, I want to be part of this. I want to be part of this. Ah. Come, come. When all the whole style coming, and they are saying, Tomorrow, if God will stop, will stop admitting volunteers. Parents will even tell their child at home, join these people. Parents will bring them. I'll tell you why. Keep putting my picket. That is what we do. Mm-hmm. And most mm-hmm. of them were, were a project of a project we're doing, self-esteem project where girls, where girls normally talk, and it's now daughter club. To self-esteem, where girls talk to each other about their self-esteem. So when they were seeing what we are doing, I was they started coming out, hunt with part of it. More thing like in time. They are all secondary school older. They are some are still in secondary school. They are all secondary school holders. And you will not know because they are doing amazingly well. Mm. When they get to university, they will be super. Mm. Yeah, that's a great one. So you said she's a um, volunteer? Yes, yeah, her name is Bashira. Okay, Bash- um, Bashira. Yes. Can we meet you, please? Yeah. My, name, my name is Bashra to Abu Sali. Um, what motivated you to join as a volunteer? Okay, when I was in school, because I went to a boarding school, after school, when I finished my secondary school, I came home, that was when I knew this organization, Youth Advocate for Sustainable Development. So I saw the work they were doing. They had um, a meeting like that for girls where they discuss that the, the name of the club is self esteem yeah. so it's every saturday of every month so i attended and it was very wonderful so i decided to join every saturday i always come for the meeting so when what really motivated me was there was a time they were recruiting people and um, enrolling children in they had a project all girls must go to school so they were actually enrolling children in primary school 70 children in primary school so i was like okay now i've finished school what will i do for myself because i don't like because most of them may, maybe when they finish school they go and look for happy maybe selling something for someone or i don't really like that even my family don't like you maybe being a slave girl to someone or so. Okay. So I decided to join the organization so I can contribute my own quota to the organization. So that was how I joined as a volunteer. I wasn't paid everything. I did it willingly. So what have benefited so far? Was so before when you come to that place, um, you said you graduated from school, secondary school, university? Secondary school. Secondary school, okay. So before we come to what you've benefited, eh, the, the, what is the most challenging moment of being a um, volunteer? The challenges was maybe all oh, this is like going to communities to talk to people, because they like going to different communities. The community we are presently is Waru, so we have other 15 communities that is under worry yeah. so like when going to communities to talk to other people so that we're able to form that same self and same club yeah. in that community it wasn't actually easy speaking to get because you know okay. you just finished school you just how would it be but talking to fellow girls maybe those girls we you talk to the maybe most of them are not in school so like communicating wasn't easy mm-hmm. that was one of the yeah, okay, it's coming here with them was an easy one. So now let's now get to the benefits. What is the most interesting thing and then the benefit? What have you benefited so far? 
Okay, what I've benefited so far is when I was not, I was not when I was a volunteer for the organization, I was not paid. So when this organization came, they needed community workers. So my executive director, because I was passionate, I was doing well, contributing well as a volunteer. So he added me to become a community worker for the organization. That was how I was paid. So that's a benefit. Yes. Being paid as a um, secondary school graduate, yes. having something, not being able, uh, being able to fend for yourself with the little that you get, mm -hmm. and also you're enjoying it. I guess you're enjoying it, or you're still enjoying it. Wow. Okay. Do you have any um, thing you want to share with us, or share with you know your age mates, the youths? Maybe encourage them. Okay, what I just want to say is because presently now this club, I'm now a girl advocate for girls education. So I would just advise my fellow girls, just generally children, to take their education serious. That is just it. And everything, wherever I go for interview, what I always say is on girls education because it is, that is the importance of girls education. Assuming I wasn't educated, even getting just a little from primary, I want, what I just want to say is to encourage girls' education, because girls edu when girls are educated, bring peace, promote the economic growth, save lives, and make the environment better. Yeah. So that's just what I want to say. Okay, and you're enjoying the volunteer, the job as a volunteer, yeah. right? Would you or would you want your mates or youth to also volunteer or would you advise them to join and volunteer if they see some opportunities like this yeah you advise them that is a great one we've been talking with the executive director of youth advocate for sustainable development the person of mr ayo at the at the sorry sorry for that so hold on we'll be right back <laughs> 